Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm here today with Fred, um, and I'd like to welcome you, Fred, and thank you so much for joining us. Can you start off with giving us a brief overview of your background so we get the chance to know you a little bit better? Sure. Uh, thanks for having me for this uh, conversation, and let's see. I guess what I'd do is I'd start with, uh, you know, my first master's was in instructional technology many, many years ago. And, uh, you know, throughout my career, my interest has been the intersection of technology and uh, learning. And uh, so, um, you know, over the years, I've, uh, I've been uh, really deeply into the technology side, um, operating uh, television, radio, and uh, other sorts of instructional technologies, photography, and, and such. Uh, and then, um, um, more recently, uh, here at Northern Arizona University, we've spent a lot of time uh, first developing um, traditional online programs. Um, we have 71 of those that we offer uh, to students all over the country. And then, uh, of course, uh, what we'll talk a little bit more about today, our competency-based education program called Personalized Learning. Thanks, Fred. So Northern Arizona University has, has done um, a great job with, with enhancing personalized learning on campus. Um, can you share sort of a working definition to get us all on the same page of, of how you're defining personalized learning? Okay, well, you know, really it's, it's all in the name. Our idea was, um, well, let me go back just a tiny bit. The uh, you know, back in 2011 or so, I was talking with our then president, and uh, we were talking about what we could do to um, sort of leapfrog and get to the next stage of, of providing access to students, especially here in Arizona, which is one of our missions of the university. And so what we, you know, were looking at were was a lot of different information um, pedagogical sorts of, of things, the latest on learning theory. You're looking at a lot of the innovation that uh, Clayton Christensen and other was, others were talking about at the time. And we also were, were really looking at the, um, uh, you know, the, you know, kind of what's next like uh, WGU and what some of the other folks uh, have been doing. And so, that kind of intersected with my own experiences where so often I was so frustrated with higher education because, um, you know, it wasn't really, it didn't really suit my needs very well. Um, you know, I often felt like the faculty member was going on and on about a concept for maybe a week or two weeks that I understood in the first class session and, and those sorts of things. So really what it, it started reinforcing in me is that what we need to provide to every student, I believe at all levels of education for that matter, is the, uh, a way to be able to go at their own pace uh, and to make sure that that student is served well in terms of when they have difficulty with a concept especially key concepts, so that that student doesn't get stuck. So uh, to me, competency-based education is a combination of, uh, of allowing students to, um, to work on things self-paced and also providing the uh, just-in-time resources so that a student is, um, is uh, never uh, stopped in their education um, process. And, and, you know, what we like to say is that competency-based education brings back the joy of learning because, you know, part of the research that we did was, and we've all heard this, by middle school many students are turned off to, um, to education. And, you know, really education is, is such a great thing. Um, but it is really easy to become turned off when, um, when either you are uh, not understanding the concepts and need more help, 
or you've understood them and, and, and uh, you're ready to move on. So to me, that's what competency-based, at least in our uh, personalized learning program, means. I really like the concept of, of making it a motivating experience for students. So have you seen any successes that you could share with us for students who have been going through um, the personalized learning program? Well, you know, um, at this point we have uh, uh, a little over 500 students uh, who are currently in the program and uh, have had um, about 900 in the program at different, um, at different times over the last about uh, two years. Um, we have, I think, right now, if I remember correctly, around 20 graduates, uh, some of which have a, a couple, I think, have actually made it through in one subscription, um, six months, um, most of whom have been more like uh, uh, a year and a half, two years in that range. We, most of our graduates were really at our May graduation so, um, so you know, I, I think that the, um, you know, for being only two years in, we're feeling pretty good about that. We, um, we expect to have, um, you know, an increasing number of, of graduates during that time. I think that, that um, what I'd say, the, the kind of the, big, big ex, the biggest success, or I'm not quite sure how to put it, but that we have students who have uh, told us very clearly that um, that their the education system was not fitting them and that through personalized learning they are able to I mean they feel like their um, their their learning is enabled in a way that that hasn't been in the past um, and overall the um, the surveys that we've done of existing students students, uh, we haven't, um, we don't have a large enough end to do it of graduates yet, but of existing students, their, their, um, their ratings have been very high in terms of, of their um, satisfaction. Thank you so much. So in terms of, of tips for potential, say, administrators thinking about developing a program or faculty as they think about trying to use some of this innovation um, in a path towards achieving a degree? Are there any tips or best practices that you've learned that, that might be helpful to others? Um, yeah, I mean, I can think of, of a couple. You know, one of the things that we decided to do as we looked at this was that, you know, we, were, we compared it to a traditional online program. And, um, you know, with a traditional online program, it really what you're doing is recreating what was happening in the classroom. So you have each course, and it's pretty much usually it's the same course that was taught on campus before, but now is, um, is uh, you know, being um, uh, converted over to online. And, and, of course, you know, on a course-by-course -course basis, that's, a pretty um, that is much simpler. In in the case of our personalized pro, uh, pro, pro learning program and most competency based, I think that most uh, institutions what they don't understand is that they have to to change the entire. Um, you're not changing the curriculum as much as you're changing how it's done uh, in order for it to be self-paced and in order to have a, a pre-assessment before a student starts a lesson and a post-assessment that a student can um, take more than once and can um, and can progress in a different way. It's it's radically enough different that what we did was we created a separate unit. Uh, we did not ask existing faculty to take on the development of these new programs and courses, we asked, I mean, we uh, hired uh, all new staff in a parallel division to be able to develop and to operate that. Um, and so I think thinking about the structure and how you're going to keep it innovative 
if you're trying to kind of uh, force it into the traditional box uh, is, is one thing that I would ask administrators to think about. I think the other is that because you are creating something new and, and different, you're not just um, replicating what was going on in the classroom in a slightly different modality. I mean, in our case, it's all interdisciplinary, so you don't, for example, take an accounting course that's embedded within other lessons um, so that it is interdisciplinary. Um, and so anyway, when you put all of that together, the cost of doing this can be quite high, uh, the upfront cost. Um, we are, um, uh, at this point, I think we have probably about $5 million invested. Uh, and we figure that uh, our payoff for that investment will uh, happen uh, either in this coming fiscal year or this fiscal year or the next fiscal year. We're just a few days into fiscal year at this point. Fantastic. I mean, it sounds like you're really doing some, some great things with, with your team and really helping students with being motivated and, and really being able to progress towards their degree. I really thank you so much, Fred, for, for being here today and sharing more. And um, underneath this video will be some links that people can go onto the web page and really learn more and look at sort of the model that you've put together and, and some of the successes that you've seen. Um, well, thanks for having me. I uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. And uh, if anyone in the audience wants to uh, contact us to talk more, we'd be happy to do that.